When the cover to the basement entrance was removed, an astonishing sight unfolded, the head of a large moon was clearly visible, its expression slightly fatigued, upon closer inspection. People were further amazed to discover three small bear cubs inhabiting the cramped space. They wondered why so many bears had gathered underground, where they had come from, and why they had settled there. These questions hinted at the unfolding of an intriguing development. In Tennessee, USA, a family was suffering from a gas leak. To address a malfunctioning gas canister, the homeowner contacted a professional maintenance worker to come to the house. Together, they removed the basement entrance cover and, in the dimly lit basement, stumbled upon its unusual inhabitants. Quietly choosing this space beneath the house were a mother bear and her three cubs. Both the homeowner and the maintenance worker were stunned by the sight. Hardly believing what was happening, they quickly regained their composure and called the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency's hotline. They ensured that this bear family was appropriately handled and protected by contacting the agency's rescue team. Upon arrival and investigation of the basement, the rescue team speculated that the damage to the gas canister and the old infrastructure might have occurred as the mother bear sought a safe and warm place for herself and her cubs. However, further investigation revealed that the basement environment, particularly with the gas leak, was not safe and posed a serious threat to the lives of the mother bear and her cubs. The rescue team then decided to safely repair the gas canister and, concerned for the health of the bear family, find a more suitable and safe location for them to spend the winter comfortably. Away from the current site, finding an appropriate natural habitat on short notice was challenging, so the team took a proactive approach by preparing a temporary shelter in a nearby forest. However, unable to endure human activity, the mother bear eventually left the basement late at night. In her haste, she accidentally left her three cubs behind, unable to predict when the mother bear would return. The Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency urgently took over the care of the cubs. The staff, whose eyes were still unopened, immediately sent the three cubs to the University of Tennessee's Veterinary Medicine Department for expert treatment and examination. Despite the sudden changes, the cubs maintained a calm and overall healthy condition. The staff devoted significant energy to caring for the cubs, waiting for their mother to return so they could reunite them as soon as possible. Meanwhile, preparing for the worst-case scenario of the mother bear not returning, they began searching for a suitable wild bear group to adopt the cubs. Days later, the large mother bear reappeared at the family's doorstep clearly searching for her lost children. This dramatic scene unfolded as the staff immediately called the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency and asked the rescue team to return the cubs to their mother. As planned, the cubs were quickly reunited with their mother. After picking them up, the mother bear slowly walked out of the basement to the front of the house, as if her eyes conveyed deep gratitude for keeping her cubs safe during this critical time. The rescued mother bear and her children were moved to a specially prepared shelter where they could safely spend the winter. The cubs quickly adapted to their new environment, which seemed to show affection for their new surroundings. This shelter recreated a natural ecosystem, providing a safe and comfortable habitat with a spacious nest lined with fallen leaves and sufficient warmth. During the winter, the family's basic needs were met with ample water and an appropriate amount of food. Initially, the mother bear appeared somewhat wary, but she soon understood that the humans meant no harm and were there to help as much as possible. The three cubs closely followed their mother, exploring their new environment with curiosity. The staff regularly monitored the bear's health, and they enjoyed playing and learning. Growing every day, the mother bear taught her cubs how to find food and how to inhabit a safe environment. Thanks to the staff's love and care, the bear family gradually adapted to life in the sanctuary, demonstrating significant vitality. As spring approached, the mother bear and her cubs, covered in thick fur, reached their best state, full of energy. When spring flowers began to bloom and everything was restored, the Wildlife Resources Agency staff planned to return the family to the wild so they could continue writing their chapters in the forest. Thankfully, if the homeowner's discovery had not been timely, 
staying in the basement for a long time would have been very dangerous. This incident vividly proved that even wild animals might inadvertently send distress signals to humans when facing challenging situations. As the most adaptively developed organisms on Earth, we humans have a greater responsibility to reach out and help other animals overcome survival challenges and cooperate to maintain harmony in the Earth's ecosystem. After listening to this tale, what are your impressions? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. Your insights are valuable to us. Now, we have another engaging story. Let's proceed to the next one. In the vast expanse of the world, there are certain individuals whose actions are steeped in malevolence. One such example involves a group of ruthless poachers who had mercilessly tied a hunter named David to a tree. During this dire situation, an unexpected encounter unfolded when a bear noticed him, setting the stage for an astonishing turn of events. David, the hunter, was experiencing a tremendous amount of disorientation, his head was clouded, and his thoughts were scattered as he grappled with confusion about his whereabouts and the circumstances that led him to be in such a perilous position. His mouth was dry, and his tongue felt thick, making it difficult to even open his eyes. While the forest around him seemed somewhat familiar, the details of why he was there eluded him, struggling to stand. David was abruptly reminded of his predicament as he felt the ropes that tightly bound him to the tree. The restraints were secure, rendering any attempt to escape futile. His arms felt heavy, and despite his desperate efforts, he found himself unable to break free. For someone accustomed to the autonomous life of a warrior, this helplessness was excruciating. The situation took a turn for the worse when a large bear emerged from the dense woods. As it sniffed the air and moved closer, a flicker of recognition crossed David's mind. He remembered holding a bear cub earlier, however, the cub was now nowhere to be seen. Anxiety surged through him as he wondered if this was the mother bear approaching. If he still carried the scent of her cub, he could be in grave danger. As the bear drew closer, David's heart pounded fiercely, yet, as the bear stood before him, he recognized her from the distinctive scars on her back and leg. He had seen this bear before during his years living on the edge of the forest. This realization transported him back to a pivotal moment from his past. David had moved to this area after retiring from the military, seeking a life of solitude in the wilderness where he could hunt for his sustenance and enjoy a peaceful existence. However, he had not anticipated the challenges and unexpected encounters that living in the wild would bring. One memorable day, while hunting, he stumbled upon a distressing scene. He heard unsettling sounds that reminded him of the agonizing cries he had encountered on the battlefield. Driven by a sense of duty not to ignore such distress, he decided to investigate, hoping to offer assistance. Using the stealth skills honed during his military service, David moved silently through the underbrush. As he neared the source of the cries, he discovered a bear caught in a trap, suffering immensely. It was during this encounter that he freed the bear, unknowingly creating a bond that would later come full circle in his current predicament, in a remote and frosty woodland. David stumbled upon a heart-wrenching scene that would test his morals and wilderness skills, amidst the dense trees. A distressing wail led him to a young bear cub ensnared in a vicious bear trap. The cub, barely a year old and bleeding profusely, was caught in a contraption designed for a much larger bear. The trap's cruel jaws had clamped around the cub's leg, possibly fracturing the bone as it sliced into the flesh. David, an experienced woodsman who occasionally hunted for sustenance, was deeply opposed to the use of such inhumane traps, which were often left by poachers plaguing the area. These traps not only caused unnecessary suffering but also endangered innocent wildlife like the cub, which he suspected might be a victim of such illegal hunting practices. Concern for the young bear, who was in evident agony and might still require its mother's care, David surveyed the surroundings for any sign of her, knowing the risks. Given that even a young bear could be dangerous with its powerful paws, he made a cautious decision to approach. He returned swiftly to his nearby cabin to prepare, grabbing essential supplies, some food, a first aid kit, a thick jacket, and protective gloves. Upon returning, 
David tried to calm the frightened cub by softly speaking to it and cautiously offered pieces of fish, which seemed to momentarily distract it from its pain. He then carefully triggered the trap's release mechanism. Although the trap snapped open, it caused the cub's leg to bleed more intensely, reacting quickly. David applied a clean cloth from his first aid kit to stem the bleeding. Thankfully, upon closer inspection, it seemed that the bone wasn't broken. Despite some resistance from the cub, David managed to clean the wound. As the cub continued to eat, it seemed to recognize that David was there to assist, not harm, once the bleeding was under control. He applied an antibiotic ointment and secured the wound with adhesive closure strips that were designed to eventually loosen, allowing the wound to heal naturally. As the cub began to recover from the initial shock, it moved more freely and even started to vocalize again. This time, its sounds were no longer cries of distress but rather tentative calls of curiosity. David understood that the cub remained a wild animal, and it was not feasible for him to stitch the wound closed, however. He hoped the adhesive strips would adequately protect against infection and aid in the natural healing process. As he watched the cub start to regain its strength, David felt a cautious optimism, hoping that the intervention would be enough to give the cub a chance at survival in the wild, to face challenges head-on, as he moved stealthily through the dense underbrush. The crisp crackling of twigs underfoot seemed unusually loud in the silent forest. His ears tuned to any further sounds of disturbance, David advanced with a mixture of caution and resolve. His suspicions were confirmed when he stumbled upon a freshly abandoned campsite, scattered remnants of a hastily consumed meal and discarded ammunition boxes indicated that the intruders might still be close by. The realization that he could be walking into a dangerous confrontation did not deter him. Instead, it fueled his determination to protect the forest and its inhabitants. David knew the terrain well, an advantage he had over the poachers, using his knowledge, he circled back to a vantage point that overlooked the likely path the poachers would take, as he waited in silent vigil, his thoughts wandered to the injured bear cub he had encountered months earlier, the encounter wasn't just a fleeting moment, it symbolized his deep-seated commitment to the wildlife he so cherished, the scars on the cub, now a young bear were a testament to survival and resilience, qualities David saw in himself, hours passed, and as the sun began to set, casting long shadows through the trees, David's patience paid off, rustling from the direction of the path drew his immediate focus, peering through his binoculars, he identified two men carrying rifles, moving awkwardly under the weight of heavy sacks, likely containing illicit gains from their poaching. Remembering the ranger's advice to avoid direct confrontation, David carefully noted their features in the direction they were heading. Once they were out of sight, he made his way back to his cabin. There, he was able to activate his old, crank-powered radio to send a detailed report to the game rangers. His report included descriptions of the poachers, their direction of travel, and any other potentially identifying details. David's actions were instrumental in the subsequent capture of the poachers by local authorities. The game rangers commended him for his bravery and discretion, which had been crucial in handling the situation safely and effectively. His ongoing partnership with the rangers not only reinforced his reputation as a guardian of the forest but also underscored the critical role that local knowledge and commitment play in conservation efforts. This incident, while harrowing, reaffirmed David's resolve to continue living in the forest, supporting the balance of the ecosystem, his life, intertwined with the wild, was a profound testament to the symbiosis between man and nature, and his legacy would be remembered by all who knew him and shared his reverence for the wilderness. In the face of danger, David chose to confront it head-on rather than retreat, ignoring the potential threats. He edged closer to where the gunfire originated, upon reaching the scene. David was shocked to find two men aggressively targeting a mother bear. The men had obstructed her path and inflicted wounds that forced her into the dense forest, leaving her cub exposed and helpless. The terrified young bear sought refuge behind some bushes, its vulnerability palpable. Acting decisively, David quietly placed his backpack on the ground and moved towards the men with stealth. 
he swiftly incapacitated the man holding the cub with a precise strike to the head. Rendering him unconscious, David then turned his attention to the second poacher, swiftly disarming him and securing the safety of the cub, just as he was about to exit the scene, a sharp pain pierced his neck, a tranquilizer dart had hit him, as the tranquilizer's effects began to cloud his senses, David saw a third man appear from the shadows of the forest and take the cub from his weakened grasp, the poachers, though slightly roughed up were alive and discussed a potential buyer for the cub as they left David incapacitated in the wilderness. When David regained consciousness, his mind was disoriented, and he struggled to piece together the recent events or discern his location. The tranquilizer had left him with a heavy, swollen tongue and a foggy mind, almost paralyzing his ability to think clearly, as he attempted to open his eyes. The realization that he was in a forest dawned on him, unbeknownst to him. The tranquilizer was still active in his bloodstream, significantly hampering his ability to recover swiftly. He tried to rise, leaning against a tree for support, only to discover that he was bound to it. His arms felt extraordinarily heavy, and despite his efforts, he couldn't free himself, which created an overwhelming sense of despair. The situation escalated when a massive bear emerged from the woods and stood on its hind legs, sniffing the air. It was the injured mother bear. Returning to seek vengeance and retrieve her cub, which David had attempted to rescue, the bear, drawn by David's scent which had transferred from the cub during their brief interaction, perceived him as a threat, towering over David, the bear approached menacingly, this unforeseen consequence of his rescue attempt now placed David in grave danger, as the mother bear might have mistaken him for one of her cub's captors, David stood still continuously sniffing the air as the bear approached him. It was then that he noticed a distinctive mark on one of the bear's hind legs, a bald patch interspersed with scars that stirred a memory. These were the remnants of injuries he had treated several years ago when he had rescued the young cub from the jaws of a bear trap. Now, as the bear sought to protect her own cub, David's life hung precariously in the balance. The bear was so close that David could have reached out and touched her. If not for the ropes that restrained him, the bear's injured state made her behavior even more unpredictable. She lifted her front paw, swiping it just past David's face, missing by mere inches, fully alert now. David felt a surge of adrenaline sharpen his senses as the bear circled around him. In a surprising turn of events, the bear suddenly bit through the ropes that bound him with her teeth and then moved away, effectively setting him free. David was left pondering whether the bear remembered his past act of kindness or simply sensed his current intentions to help her cub. Upon closer inspection, David realized the bear's wound was less severe than he initially thought. It was merely a superficial graze from a poacher's bullet, and she would likely recover. However, the fate of her cub, snatched by cruel poachers, was still uncertain. David suspected that these poachers were capturing young bears to sell as exotic pets. A trade likely to end up in the hands of unscrupulous individuals, as no ethical person would partake in such transactions. Driven by a deep sense of duty, David decided he must attempt to reunite the cub with its mother, who could be heard audibly calling for her offspring in the distance. She ventured deeper into the forest in search of her cub. Once she was out of sight, David quickly returned to the spot where he had left his backpack. Thankfully, it was untouched and his radio was still inside, ignoring the potential for noise. He turned on the device and urgently contacted the park rangers. The rangers were initially taken aback by his report but promised to assist him. However, David was impatient to act, aware that with each passing second, the chances of locating the cub dwindled. He began to track, hoping to find the poachers and the cub before it was too late. The rangers would soon join him, his skills and tracking would be essential now. There were moments when he lost the trail, but he managed to pick it up again. Driven by a relentless determination to bring the young bear back to its mother, David found himself led through a river, a new obstacle in his mission. Scanning the banks meticulously, he was close to losing hope when he noticed tracks on the opposite side that belonged to three men. He maintained regular contact with the rangers providing frequent updates on his findings, as he proceeded. 
he suddenly caught snippets of conversation and paused to listen. After sending a final radio update, he switched off his device, knowing that the crucial moment was at hand, alert and cautious, determined not to be taken by surprise again. David cautiously peered through the dense foliage, to his astonishment, the scene that unfolded was not what he had anticipated. He had expected to find only a bear cub involved in this poaching incident. But instead, he stumbled upon a much larger and more sinister operation. In a small clearing, he saw the bear cub confined to a cramped cage, but it was far from alone. Arrayed around it were numerous other cages, each containing various wildlife species, two additional bear cubs, a pacing wolf, and several foxes. Nearby, there were also glass enclosures housing snakes. These men were clearly not just poachers but were deeply involved in a large-scale exotic animal trading operation. The animals were being loaded onto vehicles, evidently in preparation for departure. If David didn't act swiftly, these creatures would be lost to the dark world of illegal wildlife trade. Realizing the gravity of the situation, David discreetly repositioned himself and sent an urgent message to a nearby ranger team. They quickly arrived to support him, understanding the peril of approaching the traffickers alone, which could provoke them to open fire. Indiscriminately harming anyone or anything in their vicinity, the poachers, realizing they were surrounded and vastly outnumbered, raised their rifles defensively but soon saw the futility and surrendered. The culprits were detained and, upon negotiation with the police, disclosed the identities of potential buyers leading to significant breakthroughs in dismantling a notorious network involved in the illegal exotic animal trade. This arrest dealt a substantial blow to poaching activities in the area, thanks to the collaborative efforts of the apprehended individuals and the rangers. However, the immediate concern was the welfare of the rescued animals. While some required urgent medical care due to their poor condition, Others were healthy enough to be released back into the wild almost immediately, sadly, some young bear cubs, having lost their mothers, needed special care at wildlife rehabilitation centers until they were ready to survive independently in their natural habitat. This operation not only saved numerous lives but also highlighted the critical issue of exotic animal trading, marking a significant victory for conservation efforts in the region. David was deeply committed to the conservation of wildlife and their natural habitats. One particular case that urgently demanded his attention was that of a young bear cub, which had unfortunately become separated from its mother due to the activities of poachers in the area. Once the authorities had successfully apprehended the poachers, David was quick to take action to reunite the cub with its mother, utilizing one of the ranger's vehicles. David transported the anxious cub back to its original location in the wild. Throughout the journey, the cub exhibited signs of stress, audibly calling out for its mother, which tugged at David's heart. Upon their arrival, David gently placed the cub down on the forest floor and retreated to the safety of the vehicle. From a distance, he observed as the mother bear, identifiable by a distinctive scar on her leg, rushed through the trees towards the sound of her cub's cries. The reunion was a touching moment. The mother bear paused momentarily to look in David's direction, her gaze almost conveying a sense of gratitude, before she led her cub back into the safety of the forest. As he watched them disappear into the dense foliage, David felt a surge of fulfillment. He believed that this experience epitomized the ideal interaction between humans and wildlife, one based on respect and aid rather than interference and harm. Thank you for watching this heartfelt story of conservation and reconnection. What do you think about David's proactive decision to intervene and reunite the bear cub with its mother? Would you have done the same in his place? We invite you to join us next time for more inspiring tales from the wild. Please share your thoughts and comments on this story. That's all for today's story. Please subscribe and give a thumbs up. See you next time.